This week in IT, Microsoft has started working on the next version of Windows 11, Office apps are getting a performance boost, and AI capabilities are coming to Entra ID. So stay tuned for all the latest news. Welcome to This Week in IT, the show where I talk about everything connected to Microsoft 365, Azure and Windows. But before I get started, I've got a quick favour to ask you. 26% of the people who watched last week's video weren't subscribed to the channel. Now, as we go live today, we're on about 11,400 subscribers, and I'd love it if we could push that up to 11,450 this week. So if you'd like to see these weekly news roundups from Petri.com, please subscribe to the channel and don't forget to hit the the bell notification to make sure that you don't miss out on the latest uploads. Earlier this week, Microsoft announced that it was releasing a new set of builds to the Insider Preview channel, so builds 26-200 to be precise, and these builds are starting to bring features that Microsoft have been working on in the Canary channel into different channels on the Insider Preview program, and basically what they're doing here is bringing some of these features that they've been working on um, in the past few months or so and some features that are specifically designed to enable compatibility with Snapdragon's upcoming X2 Elite chips. So these are the next generation of ARM chips that Snapdragon has been developing. The first generation was released last year and they're what you'll find in some of Microsoft's Copilot Plus PCs and the next generation of those chips is going to probably be announced either in summer or in fall of this year and of course Microsoft is working with Snapdragon to make sure that Windows is going to be compatible with those chips. So at the moment Windows 11 build 24 H2, which was released at the end of last year, is the current version that is in the stable channel. There have been lots of problems with this build because it was a major, major underlying platform change, really to enable the whole Windows on ARM story to be what it is that you see today. So there were some major architectural changes that happened under the hood. Now, unfortunately, those big changes have resulted in a lot of teething problems. I think that might be a little bit of an understatement. Of course, we've reported on those things on Petri and they've been reported around the web. And Microsoft has been very slow to roll this build out because of those problems. So I think there are still many devices that still don't have Windows 11 24H2. I know that only one of my devices has it at the moment. The newer device, the older device that I use every day hasn't been offered it yet. And I guess that's because either there's some kind of block because of a compatibility issue or just in general, Microsoft is not confident that the new build won't cause any issues on that device. So that build is based on a platform which Microsoft internally called Germanium. So this is an internal code name that Microsoft had been using. Now, because Microsoft is starting to backport some of the things that it had been working on in the Canary channel into other channels on the Insider Preview program, it looks like it's going to be moving some of those things into 24 H2, and those things will probably, of course, be coming to 25 H2. So you can consider this work, you know, to be uh, some enhancements to the current Windows 11 build and the start of what is probably going to form Windows 11 25 H2. Now, because of what's happening, it looks like 25 H2 will also likely be based on Germanium. Now, that is probably good news because the underlying platform form doesn't change significantly. So when it comes around to installing 25H2 later this year or early in 2026, hopefully the issues with that build will be rel relatively minor and it will be a quick upgrade because it probably won't require a complete operating system reinstall because the base of the OS is not changing in a big way. Now this year is going to be especially important for the Windows 11 build that comes 
comes out in the fall of this year because many organizations are upgrading devices, renewing devices, and moving to Windows 11. We've talked about this over the last couple of weeks on the channel because, as you probably already know, Windows 10 is reaching end of life in October 2025. Now, it doesn't mean that organizations have to move off of Windows 10, but if you don't move off of Windows 10 at that point, you're going to have to pay for extended security updates and they're only going to be available for a limited amount of time. And of course, many organizations don't want to do that. They're going to have to move to Windows 11 or a new version of Windows at some point. So if they can do it, then that's probably a good time to do it. And, you know, there will be a hardware cycle refresh for many organizations as well. And to be honest, I think that Microsoft isn't pushing the Snapdragon X Elite processors at the moment for business. It's still a bit of a work in progress. There have been some issues with these devices. Compatibility hasn't always been, you know, what it could have been. You know, we've only got a, a version of Google Drive, for instance, that now works on these devices that's been made publicly available in the last couple of weeks. So I think that's why, you know, you see more of a push for the Intel and AMD Copilot Plus PCs for business rather than the Snapdragon devices at this stage. I think they're more for consumers. I do think it's a little bit of a shame that Microsoft is only offering certain new features to those Snapdragon devices, because in my mind, some of those are really useful for business as well. For instance, a lot of the search stuff that's coming, we talked about last week, at least initially, is only going to be available on the Snapdragon platform, You know, considering that's something that business is most likely to really benefit from. Uh, I think that's a bit of a shame, but maybe Microsoft just thinks, okay, we'll push it out to consumers first, we'll work on it there, and then we'll push it to business when it's more robust and complete. Let me know what you think in the comments below about the current state of Copilot Plus PCs, especially on Snapdragon. Do you think they're suitable for business yet? Do you think I'm right that Microsoft is not really pushing them for business yet, these Snapdragon processors, and it's something that they're waiting to do in the future? I'd love to know whether you're using them for work in the comments below. In general, I think the performance of Microsoft of desktop office apps is pretty good. But one area where they do lack a bit is startup time. They do take some time to kick in when you click that icon on the taskbar to launch Word or whatever. And Microsoft has announced this week, well, that is hopefully a problem that is going away soon. Essentially, they're offering a fast startup feature for the Office app, starting with Microsoft Word. And this is going to be rolled out to commercial and government customers in the middle of May. And essentially what this does is it launches the back the app in the background in a kind of a pause state, if you like. And then when you hit start on the taskbar, it should just magically spring up within, you know, a second or so, rather than having to wait, you know, maybe up to 10 seconds like you have to do today, even on a relatively fast computer. Now, in order for this feature to work, you're going to need at least eight gigabytes of free RAM and five gigabytes of available disk space. Microsoft is saying that if your device goes into energy saver mode, then fast startup will be disabled because obviously if you've got something running in the background, it's taken up some memory, even though it might be reduced memory, but that is of course going to drain your battery faster. So it will be disabled in those cases. IT administrators will have the ability to configure this by group policy. So if you want to disable it for whatever reason, then you will be able to do that as well. Conditional access policies in Entra ID are a really important thing if you want to secure your cloud-based identity management access. And this week at Microsoft Secure, an event that they held, I think it was Monday, they announced a whole load of stuff mainly connected to artificial intelligence and how they're going to change the security story with this technology. There's just too much to possibly cover in today's episode, but I just wanted to pick out what I thought were two of the most interesting things. Now, of course, many organizations are looking to move away from Active Directory and bring their identity management into the cloud with Entra ID. Of course, that's the new name for Azure Active Directory. And one of the features that goes with that is called Conditional Access. And essentially, it's a set of policies that you can 
create yourself. There are also some built-in policies that Microsoft applies to tenants as standard, but you can create your own policies and it's really designed to secure access to your applications, to your environments in a way that is suitable for you know, a cloud native world, if you like. Features that things like Active Directory never had. Now, of course, the problem with any kind of policy system, whether it's group policy or conditional access, is that it can get really complicated quickly and trying to understand which policies should be applied to which people and which situations can be difficult. So Microsoft has announced a new AI agent as part of Security Copilot that will work with conditional access continuous assessment to make sure that you are analyzing your environment or the agent will analyze your environment and identify any potential security gaps and then automatically plug those gaps for you. So it sounds like a bit of a, a dream come true, but Microsoft says, and they have some a uh, little bit of a case study on their site where they demonstrate how this really helped to improve an organization's security posture. So at the moment, it's in private preview. It monitors your environment for changes like new users and applications, and then it identifies any gaps in your existing policies and provides a one-click remediation. So it doesn't maybe automatically do it. That was a bit of an overstatement on my part. It gives you the option to review the changes that it's gonna make, and then you just say, well, okay, you enable those changes or you choose not to do it. So you get the chance to review what changes it's going to make. Now, of course, you could do all this analysis yourself by importing all the policies and things into spreadsheets and trying to work out where you might have potential gaps. But the idea of this is to automate that process so that you don't have to do it. And of course, if you can automate it, you potentially remove any human error that might be involved. Another great thing that they are introducing with this is the ability to customize the AI agent with your own prompts. So if you have specific needs, specific business use cases, it's not just a set of rules that get blindly applied to your organization's conditional access policies. You can actually customize it to make sure that it really fits your needs. In their press release, Microsoft said they were able to demonstrate the agent creating a new group with 16 users that were added to an existing conditional access policy, that it discovered over 900 unprotected users, and that over 700,000 sign-ins were protected, all because of using this particular agent. So I can't wait to see this come into public preview so we can get our hands on it and really have a look at how it works. Microsoft also announced an agent coming to Entra ID Governance, and this is the Lifecycle Workflow Management Agent. And this is going to help organizations manage the workflows and lifecycle connected to their users and all the identity management story. And Microsoft is basically saying that you'll be able to get step-by-step -step guidance for setting up a lifecycle workflow, that you'll be able to explore available workflow configurations, and analyze the active workflow list and troubleshoot workflow processing results with this new agent. So of course, if you've got a very large organization, trying to manage the life cycle of all of your users is really important. Something that, again, you really had to have manual processes around in the past. And Entra ID governance allows you to set up these workflows to manage all of that and to build processes around it. And this new agent is going to help organizations not only to create new workflows and processes, but also to analyze and troubleshoot the ones that are already in place. If you found this video useful, I'd really appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up because it helps to get the video seen by more people on YouTube. I'm gonna leave you with a video on the screen now, which is a really interesting discussion about whether search is going to be the killer feature for AI PCs and whether businesses are going to invest in them. So do check that out. But that's it from me for this week and I'll see you next time.